Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker Review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Kevin Harvick's Bush and A Ford from 2017. As always, let's take a look at the box right here. Got your generic 2017 Harvick box. Picture of Harvick, Kevin Harvick, number four, Stuart Haas Racing. Got to render the car right there. 2017 Bush and A standard finish, Kevin Harvick. They made a total of only 565 of these things. That is very low for a Kevin Harvick car, especially a Platinum Series release. Got Stuart Haas Racing, number four. All that good stuff all around. Does say Platinum on that side. But anyways, let's get to the car itself. A very, very unique car. Almost a bit of a forgotten about car. Kevin Harvick raced this at the Fall Martinsville race. That race that was surrounded in controversy between Hamlin and Chase Elliott. Kyle Busch went in the Halloween car, which I do plan to get that diecast at some point. Just kind of an interesting paint scheme. A very unique random Bush special paint scheme. Which, if you don't know what NA stands for, it is their non-alcoholic brew. If you're in a non-alcoholic beer, I can't say I've ever drank a non-alcoholic beer before, so I don't know. I guess it's if you want, just love the taste of beer, but don't want to get drunk. I don't know. But anyways, let's do a quick 360 of this car. This does have the playoff stuff and all that. It's just a very, very uniquely colored car. Like, it's this, like, really, really light kind of grayish blue. Like, I don't even know what to call this color. But it's just a very, very unique color that I can't really remember any color that looks quite like this before in NASCAR. That mixed with the bright red just looks fantastic. This is one of those cars that everyone was kind of wondering if it actually was going to have the playoff stuff for the diecast. Because when it first came out, it was just revealed on one of those, like, you know, Stuart Haas racing renders. And it was, like, you know, back in, like, the summer by the time it was actually revealed, so we didn't really know it was going to run in the playoff race and have the new playoff stuff. So everyone was kind of worried that this car was going to come out without the playoff stuff, which luckily Lionel did actually update that. I can't think, did they really mess up anything last year? Do we, are, did we get any car that like has the playoff stuff that shouldn't or doesn't have the playoff stuff that should? I'll have to look into that. I don't think we really had like a big screw-up car this year as far as the playoff stuff goes. But anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Bush N.A., brewed in the USA. Anheuser-Busch, St. Louis, Missouri. You've got Ford Fusion number four and Stuart Haas Racing on the front. It does have the playoff stuff. You see the Monster Energy Playoffs logo, the Round of Eight logo. has the, you know, green side, the green splitter, all that usual stuff you expect by now. you got Bush NA on the side. you got a picture of a can right there. Exalta and Rush Truck Centers. On the side, you got Non-Alcoholic Brew. You've got Jimmy John Sandwiches, Haas Automation, and Mobile One. You got Outback Bloomin' Mondays on the C Post. Why does they still sponsor Harvick, but they're never on his car anymore? Like, they're never a primary sponsor anymore. I kind of miss the Outback cars, but whatever. Anyways, on the B Post, you have Ford Go Further. You got Mobile One, Humper, There's Pizza, and More In Buildings. Has the one winner sticker from Sonoma. Has Kevin Harvick's name with all the social media logos there. On the back, you have Bush NA, non alcoholic brew, Ford number four, and Kevin Harvick Foundation logo. You got Bush N.A. again on the deck lid and Jimmy John's on the roof. This is number 310. Got Kevin Harvick's name and all that. Got the same stuff down the other side as usual. Take a look under the hood, which is kind of stiff. See it says powered by Ford. You got Mobile One, Haas, and Bush N.A. under there. There's the engine detail if you want to see that. Take a look under the deck lid. Get your typical fuel cell and such back there. Slowly closing in on the time, we're not going to be able to look at that on any cars. Which, it's kind of strange that it's July now, we're still getting 2017 cars. Lionel kind of slowed down to drop the ball on that one, but whatever. Roof flaps, of course, do open. And there's the underside of the car, if you want to see that. You see, even this one, again, has that issue where, you know, they don't really wrap around the bottom very well. For whatever reason, they just, like, do not know how to wrap a wrap around the bottom cleanly. But whatever. At least this one doesn't have any visible issues. Just a very, very nice paint scheme. Like I said, I've always kind of liked Bush cars because they're, you know, one of the few sponsors that actually still runs, like, special paint schemes for alternate brands. Kind of the same reason why I love Mars and their M&M's cars. Like, we just, we don't get that anymore. We don't really get, like, main sponsor special paint schemes for different brands anymore. Most teams, like, FedEx kind of runs a couple with Hamlin. Legato gets occasional Shell or Pennzoil ones. But it's just, like, most teams, like, run the regular car. And the closest we get to a special paint scheme is, like, here's a slightly patriotic car. You know, the throwback that's somebody else's throwback. But we don't really get, like, a sponsor that runs, like, random one-off special paint schemes throughout the year the way that, like, Mars does or Bush does. That really makes it kind of cool. 
I definitely want to get his plaid car this year, that flannel plaid car he ran at Talladega this year. That was a really awesome paint scheme. Some people hate it, but I just love that it's, you know, so unique looking. Another thing I really do like about this car that's kind of been lost to time is this. You see, the design actually continues on around the rear. Why is that something we've lost? Like, I, I swear that nobody even uses that anymore. Like, here, here, I'll, I'll just grab random 164s that I have from, like, authentic reviews and stuff. And let's see how many of these actually... Yeah, like, here's Kevin Harvick's car. His Mobile One car. Design just abruptly ends. Pure white rear. We got, let's see, Dale Jr., the Alex Bowman 88 car. Pure blue rear. The white just kind of dies. Uh, here's a non-authentic that I have sitting here for some reason. We got Alon Day's Earthwater car. Blue does not continue. The back is just solid gray with a little shuttler or whatever. Chase Elliott's Napa car. White does not continue. Solid blue rear. Kyle Busch. Car M M car. I guess when this one can't really continue. I don't even know what you consider that, but whatever. Uh... Oh, here we have one that continues. Jamie McMurray's gear wrench car. It actually continues on the back. Sort of. Well, at least the bottom is orange, but that stripe will just kind of abruptly end. Uh, Clint Boyer's Carolina Ford Dealers throwback. White abruptly ends. <laughs> Jimmy Johnson lows for pros. Black silver abruptly ends. Solid black rear end. <laughs> Why is this a thing? Eric Amarola, white end. Solid black rear end. Kyle Busch Snickers, colors end, solid brown rear end. Ryan Newman Caterpillar, white end, solid black rear end. Why is that a thing? Does everyone want to be Dale Jr. with his Corvette rear ends? Like, why is this a thing? That's something that I don't know why that's like suddenly been changed, just be kind of gone forever now. I don't get it. Why is that a thing? Somebody tell me why is that a thing? It's especially annoying in like video games. Because, you know, NASCAR Heat, you can't really... We don't have a 360 camera view anymore, so you're basically staring at the rear end the whole time. I don't want to stare at solid black and solid white rear ends. That's not fun. I actually have used this car in NASCAR Heat a few times just for the fact that I like that you could actually look on the back and have, you know, a design to look at. But, whatever. That's a rant for another day. Well, I just spent in the last probably minute on that ranting, but oh well. <laughs> Anyways, if you want this car... It is a brand new release. You can get it right now. With a number that low, I kind of think this is going to get rare. I think it's going to be one of those cars that a lot of people don't really pay attention to or just kind of forget about, but I think it is going to get rare for that very low production number. It's going to be one of those cars that, you know, suddenly you look back two years from now, it's like, well, that thing got rare. I remember that thing. <laughs> but I don't know. At least I think it's going to. But anyways, this has been a review of Kevin Harvick's Bush NA Ford from 2017. Hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.